Boa noite a todos. Sejam bem-vindos à terceira temporada do Bate-Papo sobre Composição. O Bate-Papo é um projeto de extensão do Departamento de Composição da Escola de Música da UFRJ que visa dialogar com músicos profissionais e amadores sobre questões relativas ao mundo da composição musical. Compositores, instrumentistas, cantores e musicólogos são entrevistados pela equipe do Bate-Papo explorando a temática da composição musical sob suas diferentes perspectivas. O projeto propõe travar esse diálogo com músicos de diversas vertentes, tanto da música de concerto, do jazz, da MPB, sem restrição estética ou geográfica. Os vídeos dos Bate-Papos nos dois anos anteriores, 2020 e 2021, estão disponíveis no nosso canal do YouTube. Inscreva-se e ative o sininho para receber notificações sobre os próximos programas. A equipe que realiza esse projeto é formada por mim, Liduíno Pitombeira, e pelo professor Ian Wagner. No próximo bate-papo, teremos o compositor Paulo Costa Lima, no dia 7 de junho de 2022. Temos a honra de receber hoje, dia 3 de maio de 2022, a compositora e instrumentista Carolina Calvach para falar sobre sua obra musical. Vou passar agora a palavra para o Ian, que vai ler esse mesmo texto em inglês, já que o programa vai ser transmitido em inglês, e vai ler a biografia da Carolina e já fazer uma primeira pergunta. Uh, welcome, Carolina. Welcome to the second season of the Composition Chat, which is an uh, outreach project of the Composition Department at School of Music of the Federal University of Rio de Janeiro. This project aims to dialogue with professional musicians on issues related to the world of musical composition. Composers, performers, singers, and musicologists are interviewed by the Bach Papo team, exploring the theme of musical composition from different perspectives. The project proposes to engage in this dialogue with musicians from different areas, such as concert music, jazz, and Brazilian popular music, among others, without geographical restrictions. Videos from the previous two years, 2020 and 2021, are available on our YouTube channel, Subscribe and activate the bell to receive notifications about upcoming shows. Uh, the team that carries out this project, formed by, by, by Librina Putobeira and me, Professor Jan Wagner. Uh, in the next chat, we are going, uh, we will have the composer Paulo Costa Lima in June 7, 2022. Uh, we are honored to welcome composer and performer Carolina Calvati today. Uh, May 3rd, uh, 2022, to talk about her musical work. Now, I'm going to introduce you to Carolina Calvach, and later we ask a first question. So, born in Cali, Colombia, Carolina Calvach is an exceptional pianist and composer, winner of the 16th Independent Music Award with her song La Última Vez, featuring Camila Mesa. Since her selection for the 2011 Mary Williams Women in Jazz Festival for Outstanding Artists, Carolina brought attention at the Kennedy Center for Performing Arts in Washington, D.C. Legendary pianist uh, Toshiko Akiyoshi, Akiyoshi described her music as extraordinary and marvelous. Following her widely praised debut uh, release, Sotarenio, in 2014, that earned a spot among the best 10 albums of 2014 by Latin Jazz Network. Calvati unleashes the resonating extent of her talent as a composer, orchestrator, and formidable songwriter on her sophomore album, Vida Profunda, in 2020. Engaging a range of guest artists, including legendary multidisciplinary artists, multi-Grammy Award singer Rubin Blades, Down, uh, downbeat critics Paul Rising Star, vocalist Sara Serta, and internationally celebrated singer and songwriter Marta Gomez. Now, I invite you to read more about uh, Carolina Cavacci's views in, uh, in our um, channel and also to visit her personal website. And I'm going to, to start this, this conversation. Uh, first, 
uh, welcoming Carolina uh, to, to be here with us and asking her to tell us a little bit about her career, um, like from the beginning to the present day, what were like the features, the composer, or the facts that introduced you to the composition uh, career, the composition path, like in, our, yes. in, in your life. Thank Welcome, you so Carolina. much. Thank you. <laughs> um, well, I, you know, I started piano lessons when I was little. And then when I was like 13, I went to this in, in the conservatory in my in hometown, Cali, Colombia. I took this class um, that allow us all to kind of compose and arrange for all the class. And I, you know, I don't know, no one really wanted to write anything. And I was very a good, always a, a good girl <laughs> that followed directions. So I, I was like, no, we have to do, I'm gonna do something, you know, if no one wants to write, I, I need to do it. And, and I enjoyed so much the process, just writing for my friends, we were 13. And, and then, you know, that was like the beginning. Then I took lessons, um, because I had like classical uh, harmony, but I don't know, a friend of mine sent, showed me a, a, a cassette of Chick Corea. And, and I was like, oh my God, what is, this is amazing. You know, this is like I, what I wanna do. I wanna be able to play like that and just improvise and be on the spot. And I, I was feel I was playing, you know, piano, but I, I was feeling that I couldn't, I, I was not like the type of player to memorize so many, you know, so many pages, so many, everything perfect. And I was not that kind of person. And I, I was just trying to fight and understand what was my purpose. So I took, um, started to take lessons with an amazing, with my mentor, his name is Jaime now. He has done a beautiful work in my city because he was the first one to kind of introduce people to jazz harmony and even though he's actually a salsa you know he he was usually a, a salsa player and pianist composer but he's just amazing uh, you know an amazing musician and uh with him starting with him like ear training and all that but this was all private lessons um he he was very also very good at um uh, composing traditional music you know like folk music and that's when I started I, that's when I actually uh, composed my first piece uh, for piano solo it's called uh, Te Agradezco that we will hear later but that was like the you know like the departure of saying oh maybe I, I can kind of you know go in that direction but still I wanted to be a jazz pianist <laughs> So I finished my undergrad and then I traveled to, to the US and did um, uh, my master's in jazz performance. And I could actually learn how to write for, you know, big band and, you know, it just kind of opens all these, you know, doors. Um, but I always wanted to go to school for classical composition. And I will go to this, you know, will go to the teachers. Can I just sit in, in the orchestration class? No, no, because you are not, they will say no, because you are not a um, classical composition major. And I was always, you know, very sad. So that kept, kept me always with this thing. Why, why, why? But I want to do something that embraces everything, you know, not separating um, the music, you know, and at the end music is for people to enjoy. And I don't know. Anyway, so that happened, and but I think my my beginnings was with folk music, traditional music from Colombia, especially music that kind of connects the Andes, you know, music andina, music that, um, you know, the six eight feel, uh, three four, you know, this mix, mixture, and and um, but I didn't do that music for a long time. I was just more jazz and I did my first album. I, I traveled to, I moved to New York and then my direction was different. And it was later when I connected again with, with that kind of music. Thank you, Carolina. Um, 
I want to ask you, uh, what composition makes sense to you? Uh, what moves you musically? And how do you see the meaning of your music in our current world? Difficult question. But so, it is so ahead. hard. <laughs> <laughs> and there are so many questions in one question. <laughs> um, I mean, for what I remember that you mentioned in the question is, I mean, for me, music has to be something that connects, you know, that connects with people in different kind of emotional levels, you know, sometimes a composer could be very, you know, very, you know, technically very dense and, but if he can connect with, with, you know, people, that's, that's like the most important thing for me. Um, my vocabulary is not uh, as, a, as a contemporary, very contemporary composer, you know, that, but, uh, but I feel like I, I, whatever I have all my, you know, my language, I would, I, I try to kind of connect and, you know, to, for example, write for something that is going, that's going on in the society at the moment, or, you know, something that speaks to the people in the moment or, or something that, you know, just really, just it's about society for me and so things that like that really touch people and i think the, those kind of pieces are successful um so putting this kind of uh, in, intention first of what it is to tell a story and and later the technicality and everything so um and the question also was about can you can i Sorry, it's, it's yeah. a long, long uh, question. What moves you musically? I think you answered. Uh, and, uh, okay. uh, and how do you see the meaning of your music in our current world? Of my music in, in our current world? Yeah. <laughs> I, as I said, I mean, it, our music, right, as composers, I mean, I think it's our duty to to represent what we feel right, you know, in the moment. and. And I feel, um, I don't know, we all composers write for something, right? Because one day we're happy, one day we're excited, the next day maybe you are down and we are all going through the same thing in this boat, in this world. So I think just try, as I said, put this emotional content first before any, you know, any other um, kind of brainy aspect, I think. It's important for me. Nice. And, and uh, since you were talking about connections and connectivity between music and audience, but uh, also uh, I, I wouldn't, uh, I'd like to like uh, to talk a little bit about your connection with music as a performer, or they're saying, uh, your connection with your music as a performer, like how performance uh, is important to you. Like uh, I know that you are also performer of some of your pieces, but uh, I imagine that the performance also is important, even in the pieces that you write and you are not the, the performer. So uh, talk a little bit about this connection, this relationship that you have with performance and composition? So the relationship I have as a performer and, right? I mean, I first did performance, right? So it's something I've done since I was little. And I'm actually right now fighting with myself because I've had a lot of time writing and I haven't composed, uh, I haven't performed too much lately. So I, with my heart, a little, <laughs> a little like something's missing, you know? Uh, and I think some people are very successful trying to do both, you know? Uh, but the, the, the performance aspect, uh, because, you know, being a performer too, you, you kind of know how to get to certain um, energy in the piece, for example, right? So, so you, if you really have been there, 
in a very emotional and contrasting moment, for example, you can actually tell the, per the, the musician or that is performing your, your piece, you can actually kind of describe what you want because you already lived that moment. You know, you have had that experience. So I know that so many amazing composers don't, don't, don't perform because, you know, composition is just so much, you know, we have to do so many things and just really focus. But I also know some other ones that have done it. So it's, I'm just trying to see if I can do both, <laughs> but it's hard. Um, but the, the performance part for me, it's, it's important because as I said, I was first a performer and then, and then started composing later. And, and I just feel like the energy that you have, you know, and the connection and this kind of inner moment that is just there, it's a different sensation of being a composer. You know, we are composing and we are alone with our instrument and it's just kind of a slow, it's a slow, you know, a, a, a slow process because we are thinking too much about something. But in the performance, especially if you're a jazz player or, or an improviser, you have to kind of go with it in the moment and what, you know, your ear has developed so much that you, how to take the right decision at the moment. And that's another kind of experience that is amazing too. So just, I hope I, I can do this for a long time <laughs> or, or trying to go, you know, between and, you know, back and forth, but don't stop. Great, <laughs> excellent. Uh, Carolina, tell us a little about your experience in the field of research. Uh, during your doctoral, uh, how is, is it uh, helping your composition or performance? Because you know, do research with repertoire and analyze music, uh, or Schenkerian post tone of theory. How is it helping in your uh, composition? Well, actually, I need to mention this because I met you through a research, right? I did of your piece for Bassoon. Uh, phagocytosis um, and I picked this piece because of my friend that also is a bassoonist and and I was you know I was listening a lot of pieces and then I was like I got connected with you even we all know each other you know <laughs> but I got connected with you because your vocabulary um, you know it speak, spoke to me um, but you had some of the things that I like, you know, like I already kind of did, but you were beyond in your vocabulary and I wanted to know. So I feel like research, I mean, we are all researchers. It's just that none of us just write down <laughs> in a paper, but we have to be doing research all the time to kind of improve our vocabulary and understand and especially understand what's going on with other composers and what are they, you know, why, they do this and why it's effective, you know. Um, in, in general, I think it's to, to improve and, and kind of get more vocabulary to kind of, at the end, choose whatever, you know, speaks to your heart as a composer. So um, the research is so, so important. And I feel like after that research I did to your piece, I feel more comfortable in a lot of things because, um, you have also explained so much. It's so cool that to do a research because you get to talk to the composers and we're all very happy to talk about our music, right? That someone from all, all the other side of the world or, or even, you know, someone that you never met before and appreciate your music. I think that's so, so cool, so, so amazing. Um, and I think this research should be like a, like something that we should do all the time with musicians that we don't know because we connect each other. You know, we are, we have almost the same thought, the same insecurity sometimes, the same doubts, the same, we just don't say it. You know? And and I feel like by talking to, especially maestros like you, um, I felt like, oh my God, then, then, you know, I understand or, you know what I mean? I understand what you're saying. I, I'm trying to understand your vocabulary. It's just an enrichment, enrich, enrichment. 
process. So I invite everyone to kind of just get immersed in, in new things, especially for me, because in my case, um, I, I've been very tonal person and and I'm still, but but I feel like that kind of gave me a, a open a little door to to new to new things, right? So and that was great. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you too. <laughs> And uh, Carolina, now maybe you could we should listen, you. right? Oh, okay. So sorry. <laughs> uh, maybe you, you could talk a little bit about your a little bit more about your experience, uh, like in the realm of jazz, uh, especially being like a band yeah. leader, in the jazz band. So, uh, how did like jazz really? got to uh, how it is still in your life how, how, it, how it plays uh, like with the other influence that you have uh, because by what we, we know about you you, you, you write and, and play very different uh, styles I would say uh, but of course there is like uh, kind of essence that's you in all of these, but jazz, I, it, it seems that jazz and also traditional music uh, means a lot for you. And so if you can talk a little bit more about your experience in the, the jazz. Uh, talk about more the jazz, yeah. Yes. So as I as I said, when I was in, you know, it, it was not, there was no jazz in Colombia, like um, schools or anything when, when I left 15 years ago. Um, I think 15. Um, so, but this teacher that I'm telling you um, really supported us. We were all a group of like six musicians, great musicians. Um, and and I, I used to go to these jam sessions with them. I was the only woman <laughs> pianist. But they supported me so much. I mean, I never felt this gender, gender, you know, this restriction that the jazz is only for men and all that stuff. No, I always, I, I was, I always felt a lot of support from my friends in Colombia. Of course, when you go to, to you know, places, you know, go to to Texas. I did my uh, masters there, and I started playing in these big bands, a lot of big big bands, and a lot of. You know, I actually started learning about the, the, this. Um, I just, I just feel like I, what I did in Colombia helps me so much. But I felt too that um, I think for, of course, there were kids that had so much more vocabulary than me. You know, because they were from the United States. But I felt that it was very cool for me that I could kind of get whatever language I could in Texas, in the school, and then kind of fusion it to my, you know, I was, I felt like my composition background or search at the moment kind of helped me to, to be part of the community, you know what I mean? So when that aspect is, is there, then you can join, you can join, you know, it's, it's hard to be only a, a, only a performer, you know, um, because there are tons of people that play more than you and have played this music for so many years. So you could get sad at the moment you stop and step on New York City, you know, if you want to compete. <laughs> but it's not about that. I felt, um, of course, you know, you, you got to play and try to respect the music. And if you can't do that, well, do something else. Or, you know, it's also a search. It's like sometimes you are composing more or you're performing more but when I got to New York um I, I the first year I was like like more about um listening to a lot of concerts going to everything I could in me to, to come to me for my first album called Sotareño uh, my first album called Sotareño um and then I met um when I was finishing you know the the music I did a something that helped me to pay for it, like a Kickstarter program. <laughs> and then with that, I connected with Antonio Sanchez, which is a drummer of Pat Metheny, you know, all these big, big, amazing, uh, you know, 
legends of jazz. And as he says in a video that we were gonna show, um, he, he was very supportive. And the piece that I asked him to play, which is an arrangement of a traditional song from Colombia, had what I needed from him. You know, I needed a strong performer that could play, could play a mix of jazz and also Latin rhythms, you know? So I feel like he, he, he really appreciated that and he kind of knew. And, and at the end, you know, he got to the, to the recording session because there was no rehearsal, he was sick or something. And he said, I practice so much your piece. It's kind of tricky. <laughs> so I was like, oh my God, Antonio Sanchez is saying this. And he's the one who, who put it together, he helped me to put it together because I wouldn't, I, my thoughts, I, I wouldn't play it before with someone. I never was really played good, you know, it was kind of okay. But when he developed it there, you know, you could see, oh my God, it's a master, you know, he, he uh, and it was not like something like, you know, like happened that fast. No, we kind of developed it in the studio. So I feel like he appreciated that. And he, since then he, he remembers me, you know, because he, he felt, okay, she really, this, this person, this woman from Colombia, <laughs> um, really searching for something right and um, and it's and it's it's and it's her language and so we're um, yeah we every time we we meet uh, running to each other in new york it's very kind of emotional for me and he's great and the musicians are amazing you know the jalil show you know he played with roy hans and with so many olders and hans lewishny when I went to New York, I, I, I said, I want to do my first album with the best of the best, because that's what I'm here, right? <laughs> and that's what I did. And I'm very happy that at least that album came out like that. And, and I, can, I, I can still show it. <laughs> nice. Uh, Carolina, could you talk a little bit and show us your piece, uh, Trombosidio? Oh, uh, yes. Pronounced correctly. Trombosidio. Trombosidio. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, uh, let me tell you a bit of before, or should I just play and then talk? I, let's just play and then talk. Yeah. Um, Thank you. 
do not nice very nice do not talk about the piece or show another piece it's up to you um, if you know how did you Sorry. compose that there was a commission uh, okay so can you hear me now yes, <laughs> um, yes. so this one um, actually this was came in, this this piece the first ideas came in Colombia but they were in a very hidden book that I just suddenly saw one day kind of cleaning <laughs> my apartment. And the first, you know, the first, you know, kind of harmony melody just there. And then my friend, the trombonist there, Achilles uh, Diamacopoulos, he's uh, the trombonist of the Canadian Brass, a very well-known brass group. And he, he, he was looking for, always for like Latin American songs and one day I said, hey, I have something that might interest you. What do you think of this? And he said, I want to record it. And I'm like, really? Yes, develop it more and, you know, let's do it. And that's what I did. You know, one day we got together, I showed whatever I had, and then we were, you know, kind of workshopping the, the, the piece and, and that's it. it. It's part of his album right now. Like he's like he like, one of his albums, and I think he released that in 2017 or 18. And he also recorded another piece of mine that that is more like jazzy ballad and so yeah, very. But uh, this one, I think, like now that people ask me about it, I did it in a moment that the same kind of moment where I did my other first composition with a piano. And it has what we call the pasillo rhythm, which is traditionally, we call it pasillo in Colombia, but you know, we have the same rhythm in Peru or Argentina, you know, these kind of waltzes, you know? And so it has that rhythm to ta-da, ta-da, ta-da. And with, you know, kind of, harmony, you know, some kind of, you know, extensions, you know, jazzy sound here and there, and also whatever you want to call it, I don't know. <laughs> but um, it is very, you know, the motif is like the same thing over and over, but it just goes places. And I think it's, I think it's a cool song. <laughs> nice. We have some uh, from the chat, uh, Mercedes Monteiro. She say bravo, Carolina. Ah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, and, yeah. uh, we, we have another piece selected here uh, that we wanted you to show us a uh -huh. bit. That is uh, childhood retreat. Childhood retreat. Yeah. Yes. Can you show it for us and talk a little bit or the other way if you prefer? Um, I can say at the beginning, we can hear it now, but and this is a group, this is part of my latest album called Vida Profunda, which is an album based on poetry. And this is especially, is a, from a poet from the United States, Robert Duncan. And one day I was searching for songs related to uh, solitude and and I, I saw these poems, I read a lot of poems and I, this kind of, you know, got my attention. I started reading it and I felt, I, I heard music in the poem and I started writing it. First was as a piano piece, you know, piano voice. Uh, and then I, I felt, oh my God, this, I, I hear jazz here too. So let's just do it jazzy. And so we'll hear um, flute, string quartet, a trumpet and voice and you know this the, the jazz trio piano bass and drums uh, the singer is an amazing singer that just got a grammy uh Aubrey johnson sorry Oi. So 
Excellent. Thank you. They're a beautiful song. They're beautiful. Thank you. It's amazing the I, voice of the singer. She, yeah, she's amazing. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what about uh, show your first piece, your Opus One? <laughs> and actually, it's my Opus One. This is my only piano piece because the other one, no one really has to play it. But this was my first piece. Yeah, that was my first Opus One. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is how I actually started composition. Yeah. Uh, so this one is called a pasillo. Uh, a piece it's called Te Agradezco. I thank you, uh, and it's dedicated to my piano, to my you know mentor Jaime now, who actually showed me how to compose for this kind of you know uh, instrumentation, and he gave me all these ideas. Um, so this is Te Agradezco.
Excellent. Very good. So you, you did start very well. <laughs> What? Yeah. You did start very well. <laughs> yeah, good start. Yeah, so good start. And, and I, I might, I want to say something that uh, I think this, this piece might uh, deserve like a, worth a, a, a jazz trio rendition because I, I don't know because we start to hear things like this Calvache jazz style. So uh -huh. I think while I was listening to that, I, I made some connections in my mind. I don't know. <laughs> if it's yeah, something. no, actually I have a duo. But I did an oh, arrangement yeah. in the in the album in the first album. Uh, there is a duo of this piano bass. Oh, it's, okay. It's totally different, but I mean, but you hear you you have yeah. Okay. <laughs> I want to play one. I never played it uh, actually. Never played it with a trio or I don't know. Maybe I should do it. <laughs> Might work. Yeah. Yeah. You know, some, somebody somebody is asking in YouTube a guitar arrangement for the piece. It's a Pablo oh. Pablo Villa. Oh, cool. Well, let's talk. <laughs> yeah. You know, I've never written for guitars and I would love to write for guitar. I, I want to learn. This summer, my, my how do you say, my, my goals is to <laughs> write some, some things for guitar and I'm going to do an etude for violin and that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> Carolina, how to contact you for uh, for the audience? Uh, website? What's the best way? Uh, yes, I mean my website or Instagram. You know, it's my name. Car my Instagram is Carolina Calvache Music. Okay, let me write for the people there. Instagram uh, Carolina Calvache. Calvache okay. Music Instagram and my. You oh, it has name. music. It has music at the end, right? Yeah. Carolina I forgot. Calvache. I'm sorry. Yes. Music. Carolina, <laughs> Carolina Calvache Music. And the website? It's my name. www.carolinacalvache. Okay. Dot com. Yeah. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah, maybe we, we can go to another another piece uh, actually we, we we selected here to talk uh, about your i think it's our first album right superannual that yeah. we have uh, a, a video with, with a piece that we, we can show us a little bit of this work right the, the apk the apk yes 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 that's that's with uh the day of the recording we just say like, we were rehearsing and then we did the epk uh sotareño is a very it's a traditional song from my you know the the region where my dad was is from my dad's side is is born and it's a traditional song in 6a but i did an arrangement of it and and yeah sotareño is the name of the album in honor to my dad's family Okay.
feel like everybody's putting everything on and <laughs> that's what it makes this album. Um, that's it. <laughs> it's too much. Uh, oh wait, hold on. I have to cancel this. <laughs> and uh, Carolina, maybe uh, now to uh, as the last piece, uh, you can play the uh, Sin Despido for uh, maybe show the score and uh, show yeah. the song. And we will ask you uh, before uh, when we finish the transmission to stay a little bit more uh, mm -hmm. off, so we can we can uh, yeah. you know, say goodbye. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so. Uh, you could talk a little bit about what yes. needs you to like, yes what's this, this yes. and go ahead yeah. so scene actually it's it's called scene on the speedo uh, but the score says scene the speedo maybe i don't know i wanted to say um in the lyrics actually the lyrics um, portray the what happened to the chapecoense group you know soccer um, the, the tragedy that happened, I think it was 19, no, I don't remember, 17 or 16. Um, so when that happened in Colombia, I was in New York. I had all the time to worry about everything. <laughs> and to, yeah, I, this thing really touched me. Um, and I was looking at the news and, and I was, you know, it was like every day, every day trying to figure out why and trying to hear the stories of the people, the, the wives of the, of the, you know, hear the, the, the wives of the, of the players and all this pain. It was really crazy. And so I, I did this song in honor, in honor to the people, especially to this family that never got to say, you know, a, a final you know, goodbye. So sin, goodbye, it's like sin, sin un despido, without saying goodbye. Without. So the lyrics talk um, that her, their dreams or it's like this woman talking about his lover, you know, like uh, your dreams were uh, stay hanging on the trees, you know, and, 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 and your dreams, uh, the wind took them away, you know, like the, the, the something like their dreams are the, are the are the leaves of the trees that that went away and you went to the to to heaven without saying goodbye and you don't i don't know in spanish if you can kind of hear it one day uh, i think it, it talks about that sudden you know thing and so uh the the music has a lot of air airy sound and a lot of you know you hear like flute um, as an important element. Um, what I can say, I don't know. <laughs> I'm also playing there, but um, uh, it's it's a different thing. So let's let's just hear it. Um, I'm gonna share the the score here. Who wrote the lyrics? It's uh, it's yours. What? The lyrics. The yes, lyrics? I I wrote the lyrics. Yes. Okay. Great. I wrote the lyrics, and. How do this? Uh, hi, sidebar. Yes. Yes, I wrote. Uh, it was it was a moment for me to write lyrics. It, it, I wanted this to be in my album, so I was writing, listening, uh, sorry, and um, reading a lot of poetry. Uh, a lot of things go, were going on with me at that moment, and and yeah, I was all about lyrics. And let me just share this. So uh, the singer is called Claudia Acuña. Um, she, she's a singer from Chile. And here it is. Let me know if you, do you, do you see the score? Yeah. Yes, it's nice, yes. Ya 
al perder tu sonrisa con el viento y se apaga tu Improvisation, <laughs> and then yeah, very nice. Uh, do you say uh, we're, uh, Sorry, close, we're close to the uh, end of our program? So, do you want to say uh, your last message uh, before we uh, finish the, the show? Sure, <laughs> well, thank you so much for inviting me to your show to your program um i think uh, it's important to to this, do this kind you know to share music and and just to know what you know every other composer is doing i i, I look at the other um, interviews great you know everyone has their own voice their own search and i really appreciate it that you could you know count count me on this <laughs> these interviews ok uh, so, uh, boa noite a todos uh, the, uh, Carolina, the program will stay online forever so you can share so yes. people can know more of your music uh, Ian, you. if you want to say something just to say bye bye for everybody who is watching okay. us and to thanks uh, Carolina for her generosity to be here with us. Uh, it was a pleasure to listen to your music and to a little bit of your story. Uh, that's it. So stay with us just a little bit more that I'm going to disconnect from YouTube so we can have a proper 